Good morning. Uh, I'm Josué, and uh, the title of my work is uh, New Sequential Computational Method for Upscaling Flow in Geomechanics in Nonlinear Elastic Fractured Rock. So, first, uh, what we call fractures in our work. Fractures is any rock discontinuity that exhibit uh, high conductivity. So whenever you ha have uh, this type of structures, we call it fractures in our work. So the, the motivation is uh, that Petrobras has the need to simulate uh, large, large uh, reservoirs. So each simulation cell can have many, many of these continuities. And so they, they need to have um, uh, equivalent properties for that cells, for each cells. So uh, it's our, our objective is, is to uh, compute these properties, the equivalent properties on each of the cells, uh, such, as, such as this cell here. And, and uh, depending on the stress state. So we're gonna begin with the hydromechanics of the intact rock. Later, the hydromechanics of the fractures. We'll couple them and show some numerical results. So for the intact rock, the, we, we begin to the, by the fully coupled formulation. So we have the, we have the, the mass balance here. Uh, we use Darcy's law, uh, linearized mass content. So in this linearized form, we have uh, two components, uh, which, which is the drained component and the undrained component. Uh, the drained component is the, is the, the volumetric strain, is the, is the part that accounts for the volumetric strain influence on the mass content. And here, the, the pressure how the pressure changed the mass content. We, we use the bioparameters that accounts for the compressibility, uh, for the compressibility and the stiffness for the, of the grain, of the fluid, and of the matrix, porous matrix itself. So we achieved this, this equation, this parabolic equation. So uh, then we use the linear momentum balance uh, the Terzak principles that decompose the total stress uh, by two parts. One of them is the pressure, and the other one is the effective, effective stress. The effective stress in our work, we're gonna consider the, the, media, the porous media as a um, elastic media. So we use Hooke's law, linearized strain in the Lamé parameters. So we get this, this equation for the linear moment balance. E, and so with these two equations, we have the, the system that we, we need to solve, the fully coupled formulation, the, the two equations, the initial conditions and boundary conditions. But we, we don't use that because uh, in this way, you have uh, the two equations are strongly coupled. So we have to solve them all together, the two equations. So what we want to do is use uh, an iterative approach that can split these two equations so we can solve one equation, then another, and iterate between them uh, because of the, we can, we can uh, use less memory and depending on the case, of course. It's a good, it's a good approximation. Uh, iteratively coupled formulation that we use, use the fixed stress split. We, we begin with the effective stress principle. We take the trace of it, divide by three, and we get an uh, equation that relates the mean total stress with the volumetric strain and the pressure. Taking the time derivative, we can use that, that new equation on the mass balance and simplifies it like that. We have a parabolic equation with a source from the geomechanics. 
So in the left hand side, we have this beta star, which is the total compressibility that accounts for the compressibility of the solid plus fluid and the matrix itself. Uh, we have some particular cases. Uh, one of them is when the fluid is incompressible and the grain are, is incompressible too. We have alpha equals to one and the beta star tends to the book modulus inverse. So the system that we get is that, is that one. Uh, the, the geomechanic equation has a, a source from, from the hydrodynamics and the hydrodynamics have a source from the geomechanics. And we solve, we solve each equation at a time. So we, first we have an initial guess for the, for the source, uh, zero, for example. And we solve that, we get a pressure field. We use this pressure field to compute the displacement field. Uh, so with this displacement field, we got a new source, we have a new uh, pressure field, and so on, until we get uh, conversions. So for the fractured rock, uh, we use, on the fractures, we use the DFM, the discrete fracture modeling, which consists in uh, consider the, the fracture as a low dimensional uh, object, so when you have a 2D domain, the, the fractures will be curves or lines. When you have a 3D, the, when you have a 3D domain, the fractures will be surface. So to do that, to achieve that, we average the conservation laws across the fracture aperture in that direction, the normal direction. And we get, and we get that. So we begin to the mass conservation equation in the fracture, we decompose the velocities, we, we then integrate in the normal direction. We got this equation in terms of the, the mean, mean pressure in the normal direction and the velocity, the integral of the velocity in the normal direction. So we got this system for the fractured rock, the hydrodynamic system for the fractured rock, uh, a, part, uh, a parabolic equation for, the, for outside the fracture, for, and, uh, and another parabolic equation for the fracture itself. Q is the influx, the, the matrix, uh, the influx of the, in the fracture, comes from the matrix. Pressure is continuous, because of the high permeability of the fracture. Uh, and we have the permeability, we use this law, it's, it's the Poiseuille uh, law, with uh, taking in consideration that the fracture is like planar, is two planes, so it's, it's just uh, a choice for the, you could use another one. Uh, the geomechanic subsystem is, as we mentioned earlier, as I mentioned earlier, is like that. We have the these equations is, uh, are valid for the for outside the fractures. In the fractures, we impose the continuity of the traction. So the traction in the fracture has a, a pressure component and a, and a traction component which has uh, a normal and a tangential uh, component. The tangential component in our work we will consider is as, as zero. So the fracture don't, don't have any uh, resistance on the sliding movement. But it has on the compression movement. So when you compress the fracture, we as long as you get compressed in it, you have uh, a stiffness, an increase of the stiffness of the fracture. And that's because in the fractures have rugosities. So uh, when, you, when you compress the fracture, 
the, this, those velocities begins to touch each other, so you got uh, an increase of the of the stiffness. So uh, to achieve that, we use the constitutive law of Barton bands. It's a nonlinear elastic uh, law. It increases the with the fracture closed, We increase the stiffness, uh, and only works on compression regime. So when you have a traction regime, uh, you ha don't have any stiffness. The fracture don't, don't make any resistance to the traction. So we use this equation. Uh, here we have a, a graph of that equation, but uh, here the, the, the variables are in the absolute form. So we have the initial stiffness, the maximum fracture closure, that is the the maximum that a fracture can close. And then we got the, we got the, the system for the intact rock slash fracture. So we got those, those parabolic equations, the power elasticity equation, the continuity of pressure, and the traction continuity. The aperture of the fracture uh, depends upon the, the Displacement, the uh, displacement jump, which occurs on the fracture. So the variation formulation for the flow uh, is very simple. We use the the same, the classical space. So it's a sublevel space because the the pressure is continuous along the fracture. The variation the variational equation for the intact rock is that. And for the fracture, when, you, when we add them, we have uh, th these terms uh, are cancelled. So we got this problem for the entire domain. But our, our objective is to compute the effective properties of a cell. So we only need this steady state version. So it's the steady state inversion. It's a simplified form. The variational formulation, uh, we divide the, the domain in two subdomains, divided by the fracture. So here are the equations in each one of the subdomains. We add them, use the traction continuity, and we got uh, a, new, a new term here uh, when you have only for elasticity, we have these two terms. When you have fracture, you got this new term on the, on the fracture, it's a surface integration. That uh, use the, the jump on the, of the space, of the uh, displacement space. So we use the uh, sigma C here is the, as I said before, it has two components. We neglect this component and we use only the normal traction. So use that and we get this final equation. Uh, the, the U space is a little bit tricky. We have for each of the subdomain, we got a sub left space. And with that, we allow to have a, a jump on the interface, on the fracture. So we use the, for, for sigma C, we use the, only the sigma N part, the sigma N component, and it's, it's given by the, the Barton law, the Barton and Bunn's law. So the finite element approximation used to, uh, we have an, an iterative process. So we have two index, uh, an index for the flow, an index for the geomechanics. Well, given uh, an aperture, and uh, permeability, which may may or may not depends upon the, the displacement field, we find a uh, pressure, and with that pressure and the displacement, the displacement field, uh, the, the displacement field that you already have, you use that to to find a new displacement field, and this displacement field is comes from the solution of this equation. And it's a nonlinear equation because of the Barton and Bunn's law. So we have to use some nonlinear uh, scheme to solve that. 
we use the, the simplest, we use Picard, Picard iteration. And as soon as you get that, you use the, you use the displacement uh, back in here to update the permeability and update the, the aperture, the fracture aperture. So uh, we have additional degrees of freedom on the nodes that intercept the fracture because uh, to, to simulate, the, to approximate the, this behavior of the jump, uh, we, the only exception is at the tip of the fracture because we are not simulating uh, the, the fracture growth. So at the tip of the fracture, we have only, uh, uh, only a vector of degrees of freedom. We don't have any additional degrees of freedom. The jump there is always zero. So the first numerical example is the mode one problem. So we have a, a plate and you, with a fracture inside it. You have traction uh, in every boundary. So to this problem, we have uh, an analytical approximation uh, by Westergaard. So we use these boundary conditions, these additional boundary conditions to uh, the boundary conditions to assure that we have uh, the, a unique solution and we use those parameters. So we compare our solution with the solution, the analytical solution uh, with, different, with different tractions. So with 50 megapascal to 100 and 200, the results are pretty much the same. The, the, it's, it's a good solution. But in that case, we don't have, we have only the, the mechanical behavior. We don't use the pressure here. Now you, we couple the, the pressure and the displacement field. So we have those boundary conditions for this set of tests, these examples, and it's a compression example. So we have a, a load over here. Uh, the, le the right and left, the right and left uh, boundaries are, uh, have, has no, they have no uh, horizontal displacement and the boundary at the, at the bottom of, the, of, the, of our domain have, don't, don't have any displacement, uh, vertical displacement. So for the fluid, we got uh, a different uh, gradient of pressure. We have uh, pressure here and another pressure here. Uh, we have uh, flux. Uh, we don't have the normal flux in here and in here. So the parameters uh, is, is those one. Uh, at first we have this, this kind of situation. We have a fracture inside it. So the pressure map uh, don't seem to be very affected by the fracture. But when you take, when you take, a, when you choose a line that extends the fracture and you plot and the plot the pressure of it, uh, on it, you get that. You get that the pressure uh, outside the fracture is almost linear, which was as expected, but in the fracture, the pressure is almost constant, and that's because you have a uh, high permeability in the fracture, so you have this kind of behavior. But it's not truly constant, you have, uh, if you zoom, zoom that region, you have uh, some variations, uh, pretty small variations. And when you see the displacement jump, you see that this variation is enough to, to change the behavior along the fracture. Because this displacement jump in the, in the right side of the fracture, you have uh, an opening behavior and, and a closure closing behavior, the displacement jump is negative. So in, because in this region, the pressure is below the, the, the value of the load. In the left part of the, of the fracture, uh, 
the pressure uh, is slightly uh, above the, the, the value of the load, so we have a fracture opening. So another, another test is change the fracture position to the left. It's the pressure map. And if you take the, the profile, we see the, the same behavior, essentially, essentially it's the same behavior, but here the, the fracture, all over the fracture, uh, the, the pressure is higher than the value of the load. So we have only opening of the fracture. So when you change the side, we got the opposite situation. The pressure is below the load. The load is 20 megapascal. So we have a fracture closing. Here we will we, we plot, we change uh, the situation. We have uh, a, slightly, a slightly difference in the a slightly gradient, a small gradient on the pressure field. And we have 10 megapascal here, for, for example, we, we will change the, the pressures and see how the, the displacement, the vertical displacement field uh, works uh, on, that, on that line, on the uh, orthogonal line. And, and that's what we get. We see the, the displacement jump here and here. So when you got a pressure above, uh, the pressure here is equals to the load, so you don't have any opening or closing, or closing. But here we have a pressure above and we got uh, an opening, a pressure uh, that is under the, the va this value, we have the, the, closing, the closing of the fracture. So here are some flow problem, uh, here are flow problem that we run in, uh, in that cell that I showed earlier. So the influence of the stretch state on the stress state on equivalent properties is what we want to uh, analyze. So the, the conditions is quite similar, but the gradient of pressure is vertical. And we have a load here. So the, the mesh is dead. We have 2D elements for the intact rock. We use triangles. 1D elements for the fracture, we use line, lines. And the, uh, we have uh, over, over uh, uh, 17,000 uh, 17, triangular elements and more than 200 line elements. So the input data is, is that. We have the porosity and permeability of the matrix. We have the aperture and permeability of the fractures. And uh, depending on the fracture, we have different aperture and permeabilities. The problem that we want to solve is only the hydrodynamic problem for simplicity. So uh, here the, the aperture of the fracture is always the, uh, the don't, don't change. So it's the pressure map. We, in this pressure map, we can see the, the influence of the fractures. If you take, uh, if you take profiles along the along those curves, those lines. We, we can see the, the influence of the pressure, of the fracture on the pressure, in the, on the pressure field. Whenever the, the, the line, uh, that line hits the, a fracture, we got this kind of behavior, we got this kind of bumping uh, in any kind of height. So we compute the effective permeability and effective porosity in, for that case. And we got that. The porosity of the, uh, the equivalent porosity is, is almost the same as of the, of that, of the matrix. So the, the fracture contributes uh, very little to the, to the porosity, but the opposite is for the permeability. The permeability with fracture, without fractures would be dead, and with fractures, uh, it's a big, uh, it's a big, uh, it's very higher. It's uh, many orders of magnitude higher. So the the fractures uh, increase greatly the the permeability. So uh, 
the conclusion is that we have a new numerical model for hydromechanical coupling in fractured rocks. We use a fixed stress split algorithm. We use fracture closure using bottom wing bands. We model the fracture opening using only pressure. So uh, the new is that we use those three uh, aspects together. The computational effective properties. And our next step is to simulate some real case scenarios. Uh, for example, take that, that previous, that previous uh, example, that one, and use the, the coupling with the geomechanics. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. So.